Hello and welcome, my name is Thomas and in this video, we're gonna be walking through WordPress hosting. Okay, so welcome to video two in this five part series on how to get up and running with the basics of WordPress. If you didn't have a chance to go and catch video one, I do recommend that you do that. That's where we talked all about uh, why WordPress? Why is WordPress a platform that you should consider as a content creator? Now in this video, what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk all about WordPress hosting. And then towards the end of this video, I'm going to give you a quick tutorial on how to get up and running with a WordPress host that I recommend. Now, before we get to that, however, it's important to denote what a WordPress host is. In essence, a host is a company or a server or a company that owns a server, a collection of servers that actually houses and hosts your website. You can kind of think of it as your home uh, for your website on the web. Now, what's so appealing to a number of social media giants out there and why so many people trust them amongst other things such as reach, as we talked about in the previous video, is that they have hosting kind of inherent or built in, right? So if I am going to post a picture on Facebook, that image is getting stored on a server that's owned and maintained by Facebook. Now that makes it super easy for you as the end user because you don't have to have a hosting company. However, because it's on their server, they, they technically own and control what happens with that particular image. The same applies across the board to any social media company. Whoever is hosting the website or the content technically has authority over it. And that's why having a quote unquote self-hosted WordPress website is so appealing, especially for creators. Now, when I say self-hosted, that doesn't mean that you have to have a server in your basement that is actually hosting the website. It can simply mean that you have contracted out or you've bought a subscription with a company that has a bunch of servers that will actually host the website for you. In fact, like I said, we're gonna be talking about that here shortly as I'm going, I've got a specific uh, hosting company that I recommend. Now, while a company might be hosting the website for you, it is still technically what's considered self-hosted because though you are kind of renting somebody else's server at a very affordable rate, as opposed to starting one yourself, you still get to maintain the control and ownership over everything that you have hosted on that website, all the content, all of the videos, all of the you know, the podcast episodes, everything is still, and in, in fact, the website itself as a whole is owned by you, the creator. Like I touched on in the previous video, if you decide that you don't like that hosting company, you're not stuck as you would be with a social media giant. You can just simply move to another hosting company and there are a lot of them. So then one of the biggest benefits then of working with one of these social media giants is you don't have to deal with it. Uh, however, you do lose out on some of the control. But fortunately, a lot of these hosting companies have made it so simple and so easy to get up and running with a self-hosted WordPress website. It's not even uh, as big a deal as it used to be uh, when you used to have to set up and start your own server just to be able to get your own website up and running. Okay, so now let's go ahead and walk you through some of the steps of getting up and running with your own WordPress host. Okay, so the hosting company I recommend right now is one called WP Engine. Again, you do not have to use WP Engine. There are a ton of other options out there today. Uh, they just seem to be the most reliable and fastest with support. Plus they kind of seem to be the easiest to use. They do cost a little bit more than some of the hosting companies, other hosting companies out there. So you kind of have to make a decision for yourself what you want in terms of, you know, ease of use and functionality or, you know, support versus affordability. So a lot of other options out there, but uh, far and away, they've been the one that I recommend. Now I do actually have a link for you and I'll, I'll leave this in the uh, show notes below, uh, but this link will actually uh, allow you to save a little bit. We do get a small commission for everyone that we refer, but uh, you will be able to save 
uh, a little bit as you go through. So as you see here, they've got the option where you can save even more and do annually, or you can go ahead and do monthly, and then it's got that uh, discount code automatically applied on the side. Uh, I typically skip out on any of these, so Smart Plugin Manager, Global Edge Security, you can add that on if you want to, and you can add it in later if you want some higher level security added in there via WP Engine. It's gonna start you out with a single site, which for most people is going to be fine. However, if you want to uh, add multiple sites, you can add that here. And we're gonna skip out on Genesis Pro. So now I'm just gonna add in some of my personal information. And then they're gonna give you the spot right here where you can enter in uh, a subdomain. So they're gonna set you up with an initial staging site that's totally temporary. So it's gonna be whatever you put here, .wpengine.com. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do Rightly TV. You can pick the data center that you want your site to be hosted. And then we're going to fill out payment information. Okay, so I went ahead and filled out my billing information, which is right down here. I'm not gonna reveal it though, cause it shows kind of like credit card information and stuff like that. Uh, but then once you have everything filled out, then you can just go ahead and click this purchase button. Okay, and then once you have made your purchase, you'll be able to uh, see that they're gonna give you this confirmation page. I've scrolled down cause it Again, it contains some of my sensitive information up towards the top. However, gonna, all you're gonna need to do is just scroll down and take a look at some of the different specific links that they give you uh, to your new WP Engine site. Now, what you're gonna get from here are a number of emails. Each of these emails are going to be really important. Of course, one will be like the receipt for the actual purchase itself. And then beyond that, you're also going to get uh, login information for your website. Now, one of the reasons why I really like WP Engine is not only is it self-hosted, but also they just go ahead and set up your first uh, WordPress install for you. So they just install WordPress, and then in this case, I had to change it. It was rightlytv.wpengine.com, so I had to get rightlyco.wpengine.com. However, they're gonna set me up a WordPress website at that staging domain where I can just start building my WordPress website. Once my WordPress website is done, as we'll talk about in future videos, I can just simply uh, point my domain over to make it go live. Again, we'll be getting to that a little bit later. Okay, so I've received two emails from WP Engine. The first one is uh, kind of a getting started so I can log into the portal itself. Uh, for my WP Engine account. You're gonna have two separate accounts. You're gonna have one for WP Engine, which is the hosting company itself. I'm gonna have a separate account for the WordPress website itself, which is hosted on WP Engine. So this will log me into the actual portal. Okay, and the second email that I've received from WP Engine is a notification letting me know that my WordPress website is now up and running. It's created and I can access it via the WP Engine portal. It tells me that here is the environment URL. I can click to to set a password and then the username for that website as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and just click access via portal. Okay, and so now that I have logged in, here is what the uh, what the account uh, engine or the account area looks like for WP Engine. So we've got some, uh, some of the information here, but just as a quick overview, we've got our production site and then we can add a staging site and a development site. In this case, we're just gonna be going ahead, go ahead and work off production. This is an installed version of WordPress and this is gonna have a lot of the information in here that you may need. We're not gonna dive into all these because most of these things you're probably not gonna need to really mess with. You're mainly gonna be focused upon your uh, WordPress environment itself, but you can manage domains here. So once you're actually ready to get your site live, you can actually go in here and point over a domain that you can buy at a place, a uh, number of different places. Hover is one of the ones I recommend, uh, and then a lot of information here. Okay, then we've got some really important links up here. One of which is if we click here, uh, on WP Admin, this is actually going to log us in automatically to our WordPress website. And so you'll see here, it takes us straight to the dashboard. Uh, if I go over to users here, you'll be able to see that you've got a user that was created uh, with the same information that you use to create your WP Engine account. So that's really important. If you ever need to change your password, you can do that in uh, WordPress pretty easily. You can just uh, open this in an incognito window, or you can also just go into your account by clicking the top right hand corner and then you can uh, click here to generate a new password uh, if you ever need to but there you go you're up and running with your hosting you click wp admin up here uh, and then this is going to take you to your new blank fresh install of wordpress 
Okay, so that's it. Just That's just one example of how super simple it is to get up and running with a blank install of WordPress. So as I mentioned, this is a video series, so we're not done yet. In the next video, we're gonna take this WordPress website that we've set up, this blank install, and start to turn it into a content creation engine, something that we can use to publish our blog posts or house our videos or our podcast, whatever type of content it is that you want to offer to your audience, we're going to start covering that in the next video, particularly the pieces of WordPress that revolve around content creation. And whether one other last note I do want to reemphasize here at the end of this video, which is that I have shown you how to get up and running with WP Engine. However, there are a ton of options out there. Don't feel that you have to use WP Engine to follow along with me. A lot of different hosting companies out there. So whichever one you think is gonna fit your needs best, go ahead and do that one. Now, WP Engine and many other hosting companies do offer a 30-day money-back guarantee. So if you get like halfway through this process and you decide, you know what, this isn't really gonna work for me, then most cases they're gonna give you a money back, they're gonna give you you a, a refund in full. So if you just want to kick the tires on WordPress and find out if it's for you, this is a good way to do it. So as always, if you found this video useful, hit that like button, subscribe if you're not already, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Hey, so I get asked all the time how I make my videos. So I decided to put together for you a free one hour training, which I'm calling the seven pillars of effective video. Again, this is totally free. So click the box in the top right hand corner of this video. You can also head on over to rightly.tv slash training. Again, this is totally free. Head on over to rightly.tv slash training.